believe Jesus' word. Believe Jesus' word. When I mean believe his word, yes, I mean scripture. But it was this idea that Jesus, when they climbed into the boat, he's like, guys, let's go to the other side. Do you think that if Jesus had any intention of not reaching the other side, he would have said, let's go to the other side? Or do you think he would have said, let's go into the middle of the lake and see what happens? No, he's like, we're going to the other side. Like, I have a plan, I have a purpose, I have a mission. There are people that are healed here. I've got work to do on the other side of the lake. Let's go to the other side of the lake. And, he, and, and the guys are like, yeah, let's go. But when the storm arose, they were like, we're not going to make it to the other side. Because they allowed the fear of perishing to become greater than the presence of Jesus on the inside of the boat. To go, hey, we have a plan. God's got a plan. He's got a plan for us on the other side, but the storm is in the way. You would think that they would go, it's cool. We'll just ride the storm out. But they were so afraid. I wonder how many of us get afraid in the storms that we're going through because we don't remember the word of God that says there is actually a purpose on the other side of the storm. There is a plan for your life. There is a great hope for your life. There's a hope for your ministry. There's a hope for your spouse. There's a hope for your health. It's on the other side. We actually have to get God's word into us so we can believe his promises. In the midst of the storms that, whoa, 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 in the midst of the storms that we face. Let's sit down. This knee too will be healed. Amen. The storm did not change the destination, but the storm was a test on the way to the destination. The disciples, they, they, they reacted in a good way and a bad way. They reacted in fear because they felt forsaken. Don't you care that we are about to die? Have you ever said to Jesus, like, do you even care? Have you just left me? Am I in this thing by myself? Because you don't seem to be speaking. You seem to be asleep at the wheel. I've said this to Jesus. Said, God, what, have, you, have you left? And you pray and you pray and you pray and you believe God and you keep speaking to God, but God just seems to not be speaking to you. And you're in the storm. Feeling forsaken. But at least they turn to Jesus. At the end of the day, maybe the way they did it wasn't quite well, but at least they turned to Jesus. And even for us, there's a lesson in there that we ourselves can turn to Jesus, turn to his word. What does his word say about the situation that I'm facing? What does his word say? What are his promises through scripture that I can believe in, that he is our provider, that he is our healer, that he is the one who brings peace? I found this quote um, this week, it says, faith dispels fear, but only in proportion to its strength. And you see, what God is trying to do is to increase the strength of our faith. So he's saying that, okay, cool, we have a, we've experienced the storm at this level, we have faith for this level. Now we're in a new storm. The storm level's there, but our faith level is still here. What we need to do is be able to increase our faith level. Where does faith come from? Faith comes from hearing the word of God. We need to get his word into us so that our faith can rise. In fact, in this same passage of scripture, in Matthew 26, the word for little faith that Jesus, why, you have such little faith. That's like a rebuke, a slap and a kiss at the same time. It doesn't mean that you have no faith. He doesn't mean to say to the disciples, you lack all faith. What it actually means is an ineffective, defective or deficient faith. So your faith isn't quite there yet. Why is your faith not quite there yet? And so for all of us, we need to get God's word into us to strengthen our faith.